You are, you are Zorizi. Okay, it says Koyani Mozrizi. Rashi says Charedi Mubnei Toiro. That's what Rashi says. What is Rizi? That's Loshan Rashi in Shabbos. Charedi Mubnei Toiro. That's what he means. But we are in the Omid Yomishir now. We are in Makis Yudha Modale for an amazing morning, waiting for the Yeshua Hashem from the darkness. Today we're going to learn about how the sun is shining over the worst people, even, and we all have hope from Mashir coming soon. We're more or less in the middle of the wide lines. You go to the word which is kind of in the middle of the wide lines of and what does it mean when it says, "As Yavdil Moishe Sholosh Orim Beever Hayarden Mizrocho Shemesh"? Yeah, it says that Moshe Rabbeinu, towards the end of his life, he separated, meaning he designated the three cities in Ever Hayarden: one in Gad, yeah, one in uh, Ruven, Gad, and Chetzim Menashe, and he designated those three cities: Ever Hayarden, Mizrocho Shemesh, yeah, Mizrocho Shemesh. To the eastern side of the sun, or where the sun is rising, Zoach. And the question is, Mizrach Hashem sounds a little bit redundant because we know that that side of the Jordan where Bnei Israel were is to the east of Eretz Israel, right? So what's the what's that addition, Mizrach Hashem? What's the message here? Amar la'Kadoshbochu la'Moshe, Akadoshbochu told Moshe, Hazrach Shemesh la'Roitzchim. Make the sun shine for the Roitzchim. The Rotzech B'Shoigeg, although Rotzech B'Shoigeg, it obviously what it did was very bad, and even though it's Shoigeg, we're going to see later there's a kind of Tviya about him, but nevertheless, you should light the, kind of light the sun, shine the sun for them. In other words, give them hope, give them hope to those Roitzchim, for those murderers by mistake, by creating cities of refuge for them. Ikadamri, or there's another version, Omer Lei, Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, Hizrach to Shemesh Leroitzchim. This is not imperative, but it's a fact. Hashem is, so to speak, complimenting Moshe. Oh, Moshe, you did a good thing. Moshe did it by himself. Moshe did it by his own accord. Moshe, what did we say yesterday? <laughs> Although Moshe knew that these cities are not going to function for the next 14 years. So what's the big rush? Yeah, we prepare for Shabbos, you know, half an hour before. So why do you have to prepare 14 years before? Ah, that Hashem is complimenting Moshe. Already now, you lit the sun, Kilu. You made the sun shine for the Roitzchim. You gave up to the Roitzchim. And I, Hashem, I am complimenting you for that. Dorosh Rabbi Simoi. Now Rabbi Simoi made a Dorosh. My Dichtiv. Oh, now we're quoting here a Posuk from Koheles. What does it say in the Posuk? Now the Poshib shot of the Posuk. I have Kesef lo Isba Kesef. The one who loves money, it's a very direct Posuk, very in your face. The one who loves money will never be satisfied with money. Have you ever seen a businessman, you know, young and successful, they made one million and he's happy? Maybe happy, but he's on his way to the second million, right? So the post shot, Shlomo Melech, you know, doesn't mince his words. The one who loves money will never have enough money. All right, there's more and more and more. Kayadua. And then we continue. Umi oyev behamoin, the one who loves the many. I'm just translating word for word. The one who loves the hamon, the lots, the many, the one who loves many, many, whatever, loy tzvua. Instead of lamed aleph, you should read here loy as to him. The one who will want and love a lot, loy tzvua. He should have the tzvua. He should have the produce. Okay, so Pasha Pshat, it talks about business. You want money, you'll get a lot of money, you love money, you love a lot, a lot of tzvua, food, wealth, prosperity, you'll get more. That's a Pasha Pshat. However, the drosha is different. The drosha of Rabbi Simai talks about ruchnius, about spirituality, spiritual quest. Yud Amud Aleph, my friend. Yud Amud Aleph in the middle of the wide lines. The line starts with the word Ohev. The line starts with the word Ohev. Yeah, you just came in for the loving moment. I have Kesef, Lo Yisba Kesef, the Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh, Moshe Rabbeinu is the one who always loved money. Money? No. He knew that the three cities that he designated 
in what today is called Jordan, in the Transjordan, yeah, he knew that they will not actually absorb the Roitzchim, they will not function, yeah, until the three cities in Eretz Canaan will start functioning in 14 years. And yet, why is he in such a rush? He said, Omar, mitzvah shavar liyodi, akaymeno, very good. Kesef here means the real money. The real money is to earn mitzvah. It's very nice to have money, but the real, real deal, thing that stays with you forever, for eternity, is not money, is mitzvahs. The mitzvahs, ma'asim toivim, that's what you leave behind, and that's what gets you to Elam Abo. Yeah, toiv li toiv spich ma'al tezov v'chesef. Moshe Rabbeinu, he loved mitzvah so much, he never had enough. So for him, it wasn't like a burden, ah, let's leave it for later, let's procrastinate. it. <laughs> if somebody's offering you a million dollars now, or in a year's time, of course you'll say now, right? Uh, marry off my children, yeah? Hell am I? What's the story? Same thing with Moshe Rabbeinu. He can do a mitzvah now. Let's do the mitzvah now, yeah? I will only function later. Who cares? I still want to do the mitzvah. Umi, now is a new line. Umi, I have behamoin, loy tvua. Yeah, now this is more obscure. The one who loves the many, whatever that means. What does it mean? Who is the one that for him it's appropriate, it's correct to teach Hamoin to love, meaning to teach Torah to the Hamoin, to the many. I'm only thinking now the many and Hamoin is a bit similar, yeah? Who is the one that can teach what Hamon in modern Hebrew? Hamon. Lot. Hamon Kesef. Hamon Dvarim, right? Hamon is a lot. Hamon is a lot. Hamon, a lot, tons of, yeah? Hamon Dvarim, yeah? Huge, huge amount, yeah? Mahamoin, yeah? Who is the one that can teach the many, that can teach Torah to the public, to the masses? Misha Kolt Vosheloi, wow. That's the one who has all the grains, all the Tvua, all the produce of Torah, which means, who is the one that can teach Torah, Musa, teach to the many, be like a godel to teach lots of people? Only the one who knows the entire Torah. If a person only knows one part of Torah, he can't teach because he's going to make mistakes. In Azna, the Chazonish says, Chazonish says that uh, people can't start uh, telling Diver Ashkof and teach Betzibur unless the Tamil Chachomim. It happens today a lot. A person can be a very enthusiastic person and a nice from guy, but he's an Amoritz. He doesn't know basic things in Torah. You hear people online, they don't know basic things, right? And they give you muster and the shkofa, the, even if the shkofa they say is right in general, but they're not coming from, they, they, don't, they don't have enough background, right? So they make mistakes. A person who wants to teach Torah in public has to have vast knowledge, the whole tvua. He has to have all the grains, all the cards in his deck. This is what Oblozo says. My dichtiv. This is now supporting another statement of Oblozo. My dichtiv. What does it mean when it says, Mi malel gvuros Hashem, yeshmiya kol tehilosoi. Yeah, famous posuk. Who's the one who will speak out, yemalel, who will tell the might of Hashem? Yeah, yeshmiya kol tehilosoi. Yeah, he will tell us, all the praises of Hashem. What does it mean? Lemina el lemalel gvuros Hashem. Who is the one that can really praise Hashem by teaching, by by this? Yeah, mishi yochel hashmiya kol tehilosoi. Only the person that can really tell you, give you the entire picture. Only the person that knows all the tehilos of Hashem. In other words, if you want to teach one segment of Torah, you have to know the entire Torah as much as you can. Unfortunately, today the door oni would live in a poor generation. They say each person, if you know. You teach, but it's still much, much better to listen to a person, yeah, who uh, knows a lot, yeah, and then he can give you bits and pieces rather than somebody who only knows the bits and pieces. That's the general idea. The Rabbonon, Vitem Rabba Bamari, Omar, yeah, Rabbonon or Rabba Bamari, what do they say? A different explanation to the Postuk. Mi Oyev Behamoin Loi Tvua, yeah, in other words, the one who loves the Hamoin, here Hamoin, funnily enough, means the Talmidei Chachomim. Interesting. Yeah? The one who loves Talmidei Chachomim, he is the one who's going to get the Tvua. I want to now show you Rashi. One second. Let's open Rashi and read inside. Rashi says something very interesting. Yeah? He says, Loi Tvua HaToyra Mechazeres Olo V'Azaroi. If you love Talmidei Chachomim, the Torah will go back to you and your children. As we learned in Shabbos, famous Gemara Daf Chav Gimel Amud Beis, Hi Man Derachim Rabbanon Have Lebonin Rabbanon. You may have a person who's not a very big Talmid Chacham; he's a regular person, but he loves Talmid Chachamim. He always supports Talmid Chachamim. He wants to. Uh, he he puts milk in the kitchen. 
He always provides milk in the kitchen. He didn't get the hint, yeah? The kids, uh, he always uh, supports the Torah and always says, oh, the Avrechim, I love seeing them learning. I love seeing them going on the bus to the mirror. He's always into loving Talmud HaChachomim. The concept, his own children will be Talmud HaChachomim. Yeah? So the one who's Oyev Hamoin, I don't know why Talmud HaChachomim are called Hamoin, but Lemaisa, once you love the Hamoin, the Tvua, meaning you're going to get the produce, Loi Tvua. You'll get the real stuff. What's the best thing for a Jewish person? To see nachas from the children. Yeah, you're going to see your own children, just like the farmer has, what's an nachas of a farmer? Nice, golden wheat, my granary, my silo, 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 in Hebrew, silo, <laughs> silo, full of grains, ah, nice, golden, crunchy, pshim, a lot of money, a lot of success. For the Yiddish person, what's an achas? Good children who follow the path of Torah. So that is your tvua. You're going to get the tvua. You're going to get good children if you love Talmud HaChachomim. Yeah? So, kol ha'oyhev, kol ha'oyhev, we skip the word, behamayin loy tvua. Yeah? He's going to get the tvua. That's what, that was the drosha of Rabbi Barmari. Yehavu, when this drosha was said in Besmedresh, you know what happened right then? Yehavu be'rabonen einayu be'rova bre de Rabba. Everybody all of a sudden looked at Ra Rove, the son of Rabba. Why? Because everybody knew that Rove, the son of Rabba, always was full of, you know, appreciation and fondness to Tumid HaChachomim, love to Tumid HaChachomim, and everybody knew, this is true, Rove bre de Rabba had amazing children. So the formula works right. Ravashi Omar, here comes the third pshat, about that business with the Hamoin Tvua, Ravashi Omar, Kol Ahoyev Lil Moid Behamoin, the one who likes to learn with many, which means he likes to learn with a Chavrusa and a Chabura, not alone. He doesn't sit and learn by himself, he sits with a Chabura, he learns with other people, he wants to hear other opinions, he's sharpening, sharpening his blade with other people. Loi Tvua, he will be a Talmud Chacham, he will get the bread, the grains of Torah, the Hainu Dama Obesi Bachanina, this follows what Obesi Bachanina says. My dictive, what does it mean when it says, Kherev el Habadim venoi alu? It says some kind of scary posu, Kherev, the sword should come to the Badim. Bad means a bad, uh, yes, but bad also means a branch. Badi Hadassim, right? More in Torah literature. Badim are also uh, branches, yeah? Kherev el Habadim, now branches. Sometimes, not always actually. Each branch is separate, right? So how do you say alone in Hebrew? I, I need a little pun here. Levad. Levad, right? Lamed bad. Levad means alone. Bad, just like each, I think the reason is, each branch is separate, yeah? There's one trunk with many separate branches. Yeah? The sword should come to the branches, the separate branches. Venoyalu. And they will be silly. They'll be foolish. What does it mean? Cherev. The sword should come. This is a curse. Lo leinu. Cherev al tzavorei sonem shatomide chachomim. A sword should come upon the throat of those who hate tzavorei chachomim. It doesn't mean that. It means tzavorei chachomim themselves. Wow. The Gemara never wants to say, right? Whenever the, Torah, whenever the Gemara curses chas v'shol b'nei Yisrael, it says sonei Yisrael. Not to, you know, tempt luck. Not to be Pesach Pelasotan. Really means the sword should come and kill the Talmud HaChachomim. Sheyosh vin v'oiskin batoiro bad bevad. Bad bevad means separately. If Talmud HaChachomim, each one learns Torah by himself with no chavrusa, no chavura, each one does his own thing without trying to interact with other Talmud HaChachomim, that person, Lo Leinu, should have the sword on his neck, Klila. Veloy Oid, not only that, Ela Shemitapshin. They become, I'm not allowed to say the S word, yeah, they become uh, foolish, they become unintelligent, yeah? They tell, why? When you learn on your own, <laughs> who, are, who argues with you? Yourself. <laughs> so you're stuck in your own rut, right? You don't have any other opinion to challenge you or to be a sounding board, right? And therefore, when you sit to learn on your own, it's just not the right thing to do. And you're not going to develop in Limud. How do you know Noalu means silly, means, uh, means uh, foolish? It says, It says over there, right, in the other Pasuk, we sinned and we're Noalu. 
Yeah, right. The, we ask Hashem, we acted stupid, we acted silly, we didn't do the right thing by sinning. So you see that Noel means foolish. What's Noel in Christian in language? Noel is uh, Father Xmas. Right, I mean, stupid it means foolish. I'm allowed to say stupid about that. Yeah, not only that, at the end of the day, a Talmud Chochem like that who learns on his own, <laughs> which halachic maskona would he come to? What he decided is right. He's not asking another Rav or another Chavrusa. At the end of the day, he'll be Choyte. In other words, yeah, the foolishness leads to sin because you just, you're in the wrong direction. You sit and learn on your own. There was once a guy who became a famous story in the Chazun Ishtam. There was a person who uh, became Baal Tshuva and it was very nice. He became Baal Tshuva later on in life. And then he sat and learned on his own. Just by himself, without learning, without he got the basics, and then he started learning only by himself. He closed himself in the room, and at the end of his life, uh, he saw they saw that he had a lot of chidush Torah, and the chidush Torah were absolute utter nonsense. So the chazanish said, you know, bury him the but don't bury the chidush Torah with him. Don't, that's not his ticket to Olam Haba. Yeah, in other words, he wrote his own stuff, sitting with himself, with no guidance, no uh, right. So that's where he goes, tighter. The boy Seima, another another source to tell me that Noel means silly, means yeah, f- foolish. Mehocho, it says Noelu Sarei Tsoyan. Sarei Tsoyan, the Novi rebukes the, the ministers, the important people of Egypt. Tsoyan is in Egypt, and they're Noelu, they behave foolishly, they're fools. Ravina Omar, now up and, until now was Ravashi. Who was Ravashi's Chavrusa? Ravina. Ravina and Ravashi were the pair who. Edited the Gemara. They wrote down, so to speak, the Gemara. Ravina says, yeah, sorry, I just have to check something. Yeah. Ravina says, says Ravina, the one who likes to teach many people, the one who likes to teach the masses, the one who teaches people, that's a guarantee for him to know better. When you have to teach others, you have to learn better because you have to, right? You learn, you you have to prepare the shear, not just but, 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 on your own. You have to know how to give it over. And the people ask you good questions. I mean, you're not in North Korea. You answer the questions or you find out and you you know your stuff better when people, there's a give and take with the Talmudim. Yeah, the Heine Doma Rebbe, this is a very, very famous line. A lot of people know that. It appears over here and also in Tainis, uh, Vav or Zayn. It says, Har says, Rebbe, Rebbe Akodosh, the author of the Mishnah, look, this is your formula for life. Rebbe says, I learned a lot of Torah from a Raboisai, from my teachers. Mehem. From my friends, I learned even more than the, 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 the Rabbeim. From the Talmidim, I learned more than anybody else. Why? From the Rebbe, you learn the basics. You learn the basics from the Rebbe. If you're not a baby, yeah, you can't stay with the Rebbe your whole life. I mean, you do stay with the Rebbe to a certain point, but I'd like to think that we, if you, when you're 20, your question to the Rebbe, your relationship is not when you're 40. You develop. But how do you really develop? By other people challenging you. You have Talmidim. The Talmidim ask you questions who may seem, you know, sometimes out of context and sometimes this, but it's good questions. And you have to know how to answer and they sharpen you. And when you have Talmidim, they are the best teachers that there is. And you have to know, you have to provide the answers. And this way you learn better. And Hamoin Loitvua, the one who teaches the many, he's gonna get the dough, the real stuff. This is a pasuk that is so apt for today. You wanna what do you think? Should they conscript all the Yeshiva Bachrim and they should all leave the Gemara? It's even I shudder by just even saying this stupidity. Yeah. So let's ask the question. What do you say, Baruch? Should they conscript and con- uh, recruit all the Yeshiva Baruchim, empty Ponovish and Tifrach and Hebron? I don't know, let's see. What does it mean when it says, Our feet were standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Okay, very nice. The feet were standing in Yerushalayim. I was also in Yerushalayim many times and my feet were there. Baruch Hashem, what's the message of the Pasuk? How is it that our feet can stand a war? What makes us win the war and stand the war and have good footing? Our feet are making us stable at war. You know how how that happens? No, it's not the missiles from America. Yeah. The gates of Yerushalayim. Gates means Beisdin. Gates means Yeshiva. 
The only way to win a war is because of the people who sit and learn Torah. Gemara and Mufurish over here, Makis Yudamodalif, and billions of other sources, and that's the end of the discussion. Mufurish Gemara. What does it mean when it says Shira Ma'alois, Shira Ma'alois Ladovid? Yeah, to David. Samachti Boimrim Li, we are four lines from the bottom of the page, Judah Modalif. Samachti Boimrim Li, Beis Hashem Nelech. I was happy when they told me Beis Hashem Nelech. Yeah, David is happy when people tell him, let's go to the house of Hashem. Just to remind you, David did not live in the times of Beis Hamikdash, right? So Beis Hashem, the way we relate to Beis Hashem, is Beis Hamikdash did not exist in the time of David. So what did he mean? Omar David Lifnei Kedush Bochu, Ribbon Shaloylam, Shamati Bnei Odom Shayu Oimrim. I heard people saying, or overheard people saying, Mosei Yomus Zokin Ze, Viyod Shlom Ebnu Aviv Ne Beis Abchira, Venale La Regel. When will that old man die already? Speaking about him, when will that old man die already? I'm waiting for him to die. And then Shlomo, his son, will come, and then we're going to have good Ruchnias. We all know that David couldn't build Beis Hamikdash because he spilled blood. I mean, he did. He spilled blood for the right reasons, yeah. But what he couldn't build Beis Hamikdash, so Hashem told him, you know, wait, you prepare for it, and it's Kilu, you built it in spirituality. But the Maisa, only Shlomo, who did not spill blood, Shlomo is Shalom. He had peace in his times. He killed with Beis Hamikdash. So people were like, you know, getting all antsy, you know, like kids in the car. You know, like, when are we getting there already? Are we there yet? No, no, no. Let Dovi die already, quick, 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 because we want Shlomo Melech to come build Beis Hamikdash. Yeah, and we should now, yeah, Beis Hashem Melech. We want. To go up to Beis Hamikdash, yeah, just to anticipate Beis Hamikdash to be built from here by So did they before the first Beis Hamikdash, and you know what David's reaction was? The Samachti. Wow, David the Melech so selfless. David the Melech already so used to everyone insulting him. David, that was his thing, right? David the Melech got insults from right, left, and center, and Klolos from Shimi Ben Gera, from I don't know who, Avshalom, Madonia, everyone was against him. Uh, with uh, many other people, yeah, the kids. So David the Melech said, "Great, very good. I agree." You know, I, I'm happy that people are interested in being Beis being built and going up to Yerushalayim. Omar la Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh-oh, says the Kodesh no, 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 no. No, I have a plan, one thing at a time. Ki toiv yom b'chatzarecha me'elef b'chalti. Toiv yom b'chatzarecha me'elef. That's Hashem's response, interesting. Not like the post shot in Tehillim. Hashem is saying, I'm happy, let's read the Gemara. Says Hashem to David, as a response, wow. Says Hashem to David, no. The Torah, David was a master, Talmud Chochum. David the Melech learned Torah all night long, or half a night Tilim, half a night Torah. But David the Melech was a tremendous Talmud Chochum, yeah. It was a die in the Poisek. He says, one day of Torah, of your high level of Torah, David was more of a Talmud Chochum than Shlomo. So your high level of Torah, one day of your Torah learning, we all have to listen, to, to, to internalize that. One day of your Torah learning is worth for me more than a thousand oilois, a thousand korbanas on the Mizbeach. That shows you the value of Torah. So when you have a question if to learn Torah or do a mitzvah, or learn Torah or do this, learn Torah, that Torah is it. We see it in many, many sources. One day of Torah, of good Torah, is worth more than a thousand oilers in Beis HaMikdash. Would we take a koyen if we had Beis HaMikdash now, when we all said the war in Gaza, which is an oxymoron I mean, in theory. You wouldn't take the koyen from the Mizbech, from the Tommy, to fight. Obviously not. So Talmud Chochom, a guy, yeshiva guy, who sits and learns all day, is more than a person who is sacrificing a thousand oilers. Tomorrow, it's tomorrow. It's not a... This is not... A, it wasn't made up in the Bnei Brak. This is a before Shigmora. Right there. I would continue now. Yeah, right there. Say them. So what did we say in the Mishnah? We said that when you have the Drochim, when you have the roads from one, from wherever to the city of refuge, to the Ir Miklat, then the Drochim have to be Mechuvonois. What does it mean Mechuvonois? We'll see one Raisa. The word Miklat was always written in every junction, every crossroad. Yeah, that's Parshas Drochim. Modern Hebrew is called Somet, right? 
you always have a sign saying miklat with a clear arrow. So why? So the rotzeach realizes what the miklat is. Like today we have this all over Tel Aviv, Yerushalayim, right? There are signs, some better than others, yeah. And therefore, the Rotzech should know without asking anybody, he can quickly run and avoid the Goyal Adam. Look at Rashi. Rashi gives you a very, very uh, clear graphic uh, description, the first Rashi in the page. With our two roads that are, you know, basically parting, yeah, to the right or to the left. And one road was leading to the Miklat. Yeah, it was like a a piece of wood, yeah, like a like a sign, yeah, with an arrow, miklat. Okay. Omar Kana. Michael, somebody once pointed to me, very interesting, that there was no uh, signs pointing to Besa Mikdash, but Eulagolim, right? The Eulagolim also had to know the way. It doesn't say anywhere that there were uh, signs leading to Besa Mikdash. Why? Because here he's in danger. He has to know quickly. He doesn't have time to start looking in the GPS or uh, asking people. But the Besa Mikdash, it's a word to Chahar. I don't know who says it. Adraba. We want them to ask people, where's Besamikdash? What's the right way to go to Besamikdash? So everybody knows that we're going to Besamikdash and they will join us. They want to make a big deal out of it. So there are no signs. It has to be that, you know, interaction. People should ask, where's Besamikdash? I'm on my way there. Are ah, you going there? I'm going to join you. There, Miklat, obviously, that doesn't apply, hopefully. And therefore, it's, it's all silent and you just see the sign and you run. I'm a, yeah, okay, question. I'm of Khan. My crow, what is it? Ah, by the way, what did we see in the Rambam? That also, not only they would have signs, that's what we said yesterday at the beginning of Shir, also the roads had to be super modern and good. If there's any bump in the road, you have to smoothen it. If there's any uh, river, you have to build a good bridge. Yeah, you have to mamish, like, make sure that the road is nice, straight, and smooth, like the new version of Yerushalayim Tel Aviv road. Yeah, everything goes straight and nice. That's that's where it should be to the Ermiklat. So nothing, uh, you know, nothing's on his way. Amav Kana, my crow, what does it mean when it says, Tochin lecho haderech, yeah? It says you should prepare the way. Asel lecho hachono la derech, which means, right? How do you know that what we said is true? Right? How do we know that you have to prepare the road so nicely? The word tochin, tochin lecho aderech means prepare the road. Meaning prepare the road, make sure the road is functional and good. That's exactly what we said. Now we're going to see another drosha in Agadeta, in Ashkofa. This is basically one of the major gemaras that tell you about Bechir HaChoyfshis. Bechir HaChoyfshis, free will, free choice, as Ameiri says in our sugya, one of the most important, if not the most important, you said in Ashkofa human psychology, is that Kodesh Baruch Hu gave each person a free choice. You want to do good? Great. You want to do bad? Sad, but Hashem will help you. Yeah, not misayin, but Hashem would not stop you if you want to do bad. People can do a lot of bad things, and Hashem doesn't stop them. That's the name of the game. That's how we get sechal. Otherwise, there's no reward. If we were like robots and are kind of programmed to do only good, there's no uh, right, no reward. But dafka because you do good and bad, and you choose the good, that's that's the name of the game. That's a trick. Let's see. Yes? The Apostle can say that. says what? Oh, we're going to see a lot of psukim now. We're going to see a lot of psukim about that, and I'd, I'd be very happy if you add more. Ad Rab. Rab Chama Barchanina Posach Lehob Pischa Leiparsha Sameocho. Rab Chama Barchanina opened the, the, the drosha whenever he spoke about Rotzech B'Shoigeg, yeah, he intertwined, no, he didn't intertwine. He started off with Divra Goda. You know, they do that a lot, right? Many times, like Ben Ishchai, in the times of the Gemara also, they would start with something lighter, like a Gadita, Right? And then get into the halacha. We see it also at the beginning of Shabbos, around the Flamid. It says like that, Toi v'yosher Hashem, Hashem is good and just, al ken yorich hatoim b'dorich. That's why he should yorich hatoim b'dorich. He should show the way of the hatoim. Right? What does it mean yorich hatoim b'dorich? So we think yorich hatoim b'dorich means he'll take them to the straight path. He says, no. Yorich hatoim b'dorich, if you want to sin, you go, you want to go the bad way, Hashem will take you there too. Hashem will not stop you. If a Kaddish Baruch Hu shows the Chatoim the, the bad path, 
all the more so he would help the tzaddikim because you do have to know it's not exactly equal. It says Aba Litome the one who become, wants to become Tome, Hashem opens the door for him. Aba Litome signed by Yodoy. The one who wants to become pure, Hashem helps him. There's more help. Baal Tshuva, the famous Rabbi Yonah says, yeah, yad tiv om He says, Baal Tshuva, when they really want to try hard, Hashem all of a sudden gives them siyat dishmaya that's above Teva. Okay? But Lamai said, the door is also open to the one who wants to sin. Soon you're going to see the connection, by the way, to Rotech B'Shoigeg. If that's what you're asking, we're going to see soon the connection between Rotech B'Shoigeg and the free will. That's coming up soon. I'm very nice today with questions. Yes? Weiter. Rabbi Shimon Lakish would start, would open up the drosha of Rotech B'Shoigeg with the following posuk. Oh, what does it say about Rotech B'Shoigeg? It says... That pasuk needs understanding. How do we describe the motives of Rotech B'Shoigeg? He had no motives. It says, Loit Sodo, he did not ambush, let's sud, like he didn't hunt, he didn't ambush, he didn't do it on purpose, you know, viciously. So why did it happen? Vailoikim ina liyodoi. A Kodesh caused it. In other words, a Kodesh Baruch Hu, obviously, as you said, Yaakov, yesterday, true, everything is Mishamayim. Yeah, when Chas Shalom car accident happens, it's also Rotz and Hashem. Yes, it is. And Hashem causes it to happen, even though the person himself didn't want it. And the question is, why? Why did really a Kodesh Baruch Hu do that to the person, and I mean to the Rotzach? Why did Hashem really cause it that the Rotzach B'Shoigeg will kill someone by mistake? Because that Rotzach B'Shoigeg is not exactly a tzadikador. Must be that Rotzach B'Shoigeg himself has some kind of open file in Shemaim, as we're going to see now. <laughs> yeah. Kasher, yeah, Yoyma Mashal Akadmoini. This is now quoting, yeah, from Shmuel. It says, Kasher Yoyma Mashal Akadmoini. Mashal Akadmoini is a Torah. Says the Novi, as the Torah says, Mereshoim Yetzer Resha, Ula Novi Miten Chain. Yeah, in other words, the Pasuk says, Mereshoim Yetzer Resha. If a person was a Rosho up to a point, then more viciousness, more riches will come from him. It says, Mershom Yetzeresha, the Yod, excuse me, no, the rest of the Pasuk is, the Yod Iloti Yaboch. In other words, Mershom Yetzeresha, the Pasuk says, if the person is already Rosha up to a point, unless he really chaps himself, unless he really puts it back together and changes the script in his mind, and does Tshuva, Hashem will make sure more riches will come out of his hands. Scary. And what does it have to do with this business of Rotech B'Shoigeg? What is the Torah talking about? This is famous. Two people killed someone to different circumstances. Yeah, this is before the scenario of Rotech B'Shoigeg. There's one person who in the past already, once before, had killed someone mistakenly, but there were no Edim. You guys were asking about Edim? <laughs> if there's no Edim, then you can't do anything to him. You can't send him to your Miklat, and the Goel Adam cannot do anything. Again, this is not some kind of, you know, <laughs> Western <laughs> movie, baddies and goodies. It's based in. If there are no Edim, what can you do? Nothing. Right? There are no Edim. There was a forest, a lonely forest, just the two of them. He killed him by mistake. It was a mistake. Nobody can see. The police investigating. Shkoyach, go prove it. Uh, where were you? I don't know. Even if the police investigates, in Basin we don't care. Because Basin only listens to Adim. There were no Adim. So what happens? We all feel it's very unfair. He killed someone in Beshoigeg. And what happens next? Now we're going to see. Hashem will deal with it. The Echadog Bemezid. Another guy in a different, uh, different circumstances, different story. Another guy killed Bemezid. Pulled out the pistol and killed someone. Bemezid, no Adim. No, Edim, mm, 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 mm. he wasn't me. He, ha, ha, ha. What do you do? Laze in Edim, Laze in Edim. None of them have Edim, and they're walking free down the street. They're walking free. He's not dead, and he's not going to the Golos. Oi, oi, oi. Akadosh Baruch Hu takes care of business. Don't worry. Hashem knows everything. Akadosh Baruch Hu mazmin and lapunda kechod. Akadosh Baruch Hu invites them to one in, meaning Akadosh Baruch Hu makes sure that they both somehow spend the day or an evening, whatever. 
in the same place, the same hotel, and he's in a business meeting, and he's, I don't know, dating a shidduch, I don't know, they both happen to be in the same hotel. Zeshorek Bemezid, the one who killed Bemezid, what does he deserve? He deserves to be killed, to be executed, but Bezin cannot do it. So who will execute him? Zeshorek Bemezid, Yoishev Tachas Asulam, he sits under the letter, the one who killed Beshoigeg and deserves Golus, Yoirid Basulam, is going down the ladder, Derech Yerida, remember? The Nofal Olov, and he fell on him physically, he himself. The Otsach Beshoigeg, boom, fell on him with all his 110 kilos. The Aroga, and he killed him. So now justice was made. One instant, two birds with one stone. Kepshutoi. Zesharag Bemezid Nerag, the one who killed Bemezid, now there are Adim. Pundak, ah, it just occurs to me now, why Pundak? A hotel. Usually in a hotel lobby, in a hotel uh, lounge, there's more than two people, <laughs> otherwise close down the hotel, right? <laughs> it's, uh, they went to Ramada, Yerushalayim, I don't know where, Plaza. They went to the place with them, many people, he's uh, up there, something, boom, he fell on him, and everybody saw. Zeshog Bemezid Nerag, the one who killed Bemezid, he accidentally was killed, it's not an accident, it was caused by Hashem. The one who previously already killed Samad B'Shegeg with no Edim, now he killed Samad B'Shegeg with Edim, and now he should quickly leave the hotel room, don't make your suitcase, you run to the Ermiklat, and he go to the Ermiklat. So what does that have to do with our story? Very good, very well. HaKadosh Boch already decided what's going to happen because they deserve the punishment. Now, that Rotzech B'Shegeg, the fact that he killed, although it's Rotz and Hashem, it happened to him that he's killing B'Shegeg because he already has previous Averos. If the person was clean and a tzaddik, then the Golus, then the killing B'Shegeg wouldn't happen to him. As we see, this is similar to the concept which we see in Shabbos Daf Shlomit Beis and also in Bove Basra Kuf Yutes, it says, Megalgilin Zchus Alidei Zakai, Megalgilin Tchov Alidei Chayim, right? Yeah, it says about Maka. Yeah, let's you have to build a Maka. You have to build a railing, right? A fence around your roof. Aye, but if people fail, it's Mishamayim. Sometimes people like to be become very big Maminim when it, you know, absolves them from anything. It wasn't me, it's Mishamayim. It's true, Mishamayim. Otherwise, you wouldn't have fell off your roof. But you still have a Chiv to do it, right? Why did it fall off your roof? Because you're a Russia, because you didn't build a Maka, or you have other issues. Yeah, the issues would cause more issues. And it's it, because more it's because. I'm not saying it's v'shalom, something perpetual and, and should stay like that forever. person should change his ways. Change your way. Do tshuva quickly. Because otherwise, the bad path will just uh, exponentially, you'll grow with your bad maizim. My mistake, not by mistake. And therefore, that's the way to go. Um, okay, continue. We are at the end of the first wide line, Yud Omud Beis. Omar Rabba Barav Huna, continuing the same Agatic idea. Omar Ravuna, Vamil Omar Ravuna, Omar Ablozo. Some say that this statement was said, Ravuna quoting Ablozo, and he says as follows Mina Toiro, Umina Nevim, Umina Ksuvim. This is, <laughs> there are three layer proofs. There are three proofs to what I'm about to tell you. One from the Torah, one from Nevim, one from the Ksuvim. Yeah, what's the concept which we learn from all three parts of Tanakh? The way you want to walk, Hashem will make sure you walk that way. You want to walk the good way, Hashem will help you. You want to walk the bad way, there's a shgocha protest for Avera. A shgocha protest for Averos, yeah. There are choytim who are super successful. I feel bad saying this in Shir, but uh, but when I, say, I heard once that an Israeli singer who broke a certain uh, uh, level of tznias, so he slash she, said, uh, if I'm so successful all over the world, so it means that Hashem loves me. You see, I'm so successful, I sing all over the world and win uh, European contests, so I must be successful. So the fact that I um, did what I did and changed the chule, the derech hateva, so you see it's right, because you see Hashem is helping me. That's what uh, he slash she said. So what's the answer? <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. slash Mrs., you're wrong. The fact that you get success doesn't mean that Hashem is saying, uh, is giving you the, is ticking your box, is, uh, you know, patting your back. It means you're going in a very bad way and your pirates get there, you're the first one, and your pirates get there, and Hashem is helping you do the bad thing because that's Bechir Chavshis. That's Bechir Chavshis. If you're unsuccessful, you'd be programmed to be better. You're not programming anybody. It's your choice. And this is Mamash here in the Gemara. We have to teach the Gemara to that person. Hashem Yishmo, Vaiter. We need more Kedusha and then we can win the war. 
Rabbi Yaakov Shlita. In this day and age, if you're choosing to do wicked, all you're doing is really just going. Okay. No, no. Weiter. Okay. Um, so, how do you know this is true? How do you know that the way you walk is Hashem will make sure you walk that way? Mina Torah. Example number one, we read recently in the Torah the story of a man called Balaam. Balaam. You know the story of Balaam? So what happened with Balaam? <laughs> Basically, Bilam, what happened with him? He looks as if Hashem changed his mind. Hashem hmm, changed his mind? What's going on? Look, it says, Dichtiv lo at the beginning, Hashem is very adamant and says, Lo telechimahim, Lo telechimahim, don't go with them. They come, they offer you money and cover in the night, they come with the ksomi beyodim, don't go, right? And Bilam kept, ah, bah, 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 bah. maybe yes, maybe no. He's, eh. And then, Vixiv kum lech itam. What do you mean? Hashem after told him, okay, get up and go with them. What do you mean? Because Hashem saw at some point, okay, <laughs> you're insisting, you dafka insist to go against me, so go, go and see what happens. At the end, Bilam, uh, Bilam perished. He didn't manage to be Mikhail, right? And at the end of the day, they killed him by the sword. This is quite recent now, right? And therefore, you see, if you go, by the way, you know, there's a very famous, beautiful going there. One second. The going also has a duke there. At the beginning, it says, Kum imohem lech itam. Itam means the difference between im and ace is very big. Both mean in English with. But in Hebrew, in real Hebrew, Lash and Kodesh, im means with friendliness with the same goal in mind. If you travel with someone in the bus, if you both travel together, you and your wife, you and Stam, a friend, for the same purpose, you're both going to a shear, you're both going to the call cell, going to a doctor, you're going im. When you're in the bus with a complete stranger, <laughs> you both get off the same stop, but you're going to the yeshiva, he goes to the restaurant, no connection. I thought ito. That's not called imo, that's ito. Hashem told him, lo telch imohem. And he went to Moim. Kum lech itam, go with them, but not for the same purpose. You're allowed to go with them physically, but not have the same idea in mind. That's a going. Later on, with the Malach, when the Malach tried to stop him three times, then it says Imohim. Because at that point, and Rashi says at that point, okay, I gave up on you. I tried so hard to give you Musar. You dafka want to go Imam? Okay, go Imam. What can I do for you? There's free choice. You're doing the wrong thing, but what can I do? Yeah, like sometimes, unfortunately, you have to tell your children, that's the way you go. Fair, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, yeah, all you can do is daven. Good, yes. That's the first proof from the Torah. Yes. Weiter. Mina Nevim. Yeah, where do you see from the Nevim, from the prophets, the idea that Hashem leads the person, guides the person, whichever way. Dichtiv, ani Hashem lokecha, melam decho le'oyil. I teach you the oil in a good way. I guide you. Which way do I guide you? The way you go. You choose the path. You want to go to Yeshiva? I'll guide you. You want to go to the nightclub, to the movie? I'll guide you too. You choose and I'll be your guide. Hashem is your shadow. Wherever you go, Hashem will help you. He's crying, but he'll help you. What is the third source from the Ksuvim? It's actually says something very interesting. What's Leleitzim? If you want to join the Leitzim, you want to join a Chavri, you want to join a group of coffers, of those who make fun of Torah, Hashem will sadly help you. You can join them. Hashem will not uh, freeze your fingers when you go online to that website of uh, Kfira and this. That's where I got mixed up before. But if you're an Onov, you want the opposite of a late is an Onov. Interesting. The one who does make fun of Torah is the one who knows I'm below Torah. I want to accept from the holy words of the Torah. I'm an Onov. I want to accept. I'm humble enough to know that I don't know. Hashem will give you extra grace and chain in the eyes of other people. It's true. People are Onovim who are not arrogant or not haughty. People like them much more. Who likes arrogant, haughty, snobbish people? Anybody? <laughs> the ones who are onov, people like them more. Lanovi meet and chain. And Hashem helps you much more. Omar Avuna. Excuse me? They don't really like them. They have to like them. Yeah, they don't like, yeah, the. <laughs> They like their money. <laughs> um, or oh, their status. Yeah, they're the friends of the Choshev guy. They don't really internally like them necessarily. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Avuna. Now we are back to the halochas. Yeah, done with the Gadot for now. And now let's discuss again the Goel Adam 
on the way to the ear Miklat. Omar Rav Huna. Yeah, says Rav Huna. Now, let's remember that the ear Miklat had a few, not a few functions. There are a few journeys that the girl of the Rotech B'Shegeg would take to the ear Miklat, right? He goes to the ear Miklat with all the other Oitzchim. Then they, you know, go back. Then they sort them out. They select the Rotech B'Shegeg. The base Din gets all the Oitzchim and decides who deserves what. If the Rotech B'Shegeg deserves to go to your Miklat, then he starts his journey to the ear Miklat. So now he's on his way from the city wherever he murdered, says the Rambam. Could be far away. But should be too far. Our Miklat is supposed to be approachable. So wherever he killed is where the base didn't judge him. Then he has to start walking or running, whatever, to the ear Miklat. He's on his way from base to the ear Miklat. And there he stays till the end of his life or till the end of the life of the Kohen Godol. And if he gets out, bad luck. Yeah, bullet in the head. But now the question is what I told you before. I quoted the Rambam that says that if the Goyal Adam chases him, before he reaches the ear miklat, right? Then the Goel Adam has the right, or at least his potter, if he kills him. That's what the Rambam says. I kind of jumped the gun, excuse the pun. Now the Gemara is actually going to discuss it. The Gemara will discuss, is the Goel Adam allowed to kill him before he reached ear miklat, right? After he was sentenced, right? That's uh, obviously, needless to say, just to get it one second, the very, very, very first journey to ear miklat, of course the Goel Adam cannot do anything. Because he's not yet defined as the Rotech B'Shegeg. Maybe he's Maisie, maybe he's nothing. You can't, uh, here, you're not living in the jungle here. You're not the mafia of Chicago here. You're in the 20s. Yeah, <laughs> You don't do whatever you want. That's needless to say, obviously not. Let's just get it clear. The first time all the Rotechim run to the Yermiklat, I don't know if they have to run. I don't know who's Shegeg, who's Maisie. Of course, the girl Adam has no right to kill him halachically. We're not in the jungle here. No, maybe he thinks that he killed his relative. No, let's say a guy knows that Reuven killed his brother Shimon. He wants to be Goel Adam. You're right. There's no halachic Goel Adam. There's no halachic Goel Adam, right? But once Beisdin stamped him, no, not physically, once Beisdin classified him, boom, you're pigeonholed as you are Rotech B'Shoigeg. You got to go to the next door ear Miklat, to, I don't know, Hebron, Shechem, Kodesh. Then can the Goel Adam already then kill him? Or maybe no. Maybe Goel Adam's function is only to sit outside the ear Miklat once he's in the ear Miklat and the second he goes out, is that it? Yeah? It's a question. What I said is true because that's a Rambam, but now the Gemara is going to open the question, is Goel Adam already functioning alachically on his first journey to the ear Miklat? Or maybe not yet. Okay? That's in general the question. Let's see. Omar Avuna. Rotzech shegol on the ear Miklat Gola means walking the first time, says Rashi. Don't get that wrong. Gola means at the, the first. Baderech behalichose, says Rashi. The first time he walks there, umetzoi goel adam beharogoi. The goel adam found him and killed him. As they say, we will find you and we will kill you. Then potu, he's potu. Yeah, the goel adam is potu. Doesn't say it's a mitzvah, he's potu. Don't do anything to him. I'm already functioning as a halachi goel adam. He was defined as a rotech b'shoi again. I'm doing my job. I'm avenging my brother's blood. Shkoyach said, say thank you to me. Why is that true? Kasova, here we have to read the postuk. If you have the sidebar, I didn't bring Chumashim today, but you have to see the postuk. If you have a postuk on the sidebar, it says, we have to read the entire postuk here. It says, Pen yud of gol adam acher otzeach, the gol adam, lest the gol adam runs after him, ki yochem levovo, his heart, you'll be Hot-headed, hot-hearted, he'll be angry. Vesigoy, he'll reach him. Kir badech biko nefesh. Yeah, he may smite him. We're concerned the God of Adam may kill him, right? Veloy ein mishpat moves. Oh, and he is no mishpat moves. He doesn't deserve to die. He wasn't, not mishpat, he's not sentenced to death. Kilosan elom itmol shilshom. I'll tell you very, very poshut. The question of the Gemara is, we're going to say machloikis now, I'm spoon-feeding a little bit. We're going to say machloikis, who is Loy Ein Mishpat Movis? Who is the one who doesn't deserve to die? Is it that there are two people who are running? Yeah, the Rotech B'Shoigeg is chased by who? The Goel Adam. Goel Adam, now, is the Goel Adam allowed to kill him? Loy Ein Mishpat Movis. Who is Loy Ein Mishpat Movis? Who is him who does not, does not deserve to die? 
Is it Otech Bishoyge, which is Posh of Shad? So, hands off, you're not allowed to kill him, or no? Maybe Loy and Mishpat Movis means the, the Goyal Adam. If the Goyal Adam shoots him, if he manages to catch him and shoot him in the head, he, the Goyal Adam, has no Mishpat Movis. Because this Posh describes the journey to the Yermiklot. So, that's a Shaila. Who is Mr. Loy and Mishpat Movis? So now, now, needless to say, now, of course, the Otsach, the, the, the Shoige guy doesn't deserve to die in Beisdin, needless to say. But the question is, in this scenario, is Goyal Adam not supposed to die if he kills? Meaning he's exempt from Oynesh, Goyal Adam, for killing the Otsach, the Shoige. Or maybe Lein Mishpat Mavis means, no, the other way around. You know who doesn't deserve to die? Fakir, the Otsach, the Shoige. He doesn't yet deserve to die. Let him go to your Miklat. And then you can ambush him outside the Aramiklat. That's a Shiloh. No questions now. We can ask questions in four minutes. In four minutes, there will be freedom of speech in this year, Bezal Sashem. And one day, it will also be in this country. Weiter. So now, let's see. So now, let's continue. Omar Avuna. Rotzech shegol ala ir miklat umetso goel adam varogoy. The goel adam found him on his journey, on his way to the ir miklat. Patu. The goel adam is okay, absolutely fine. Kasoval. Because Rav Huna believes that Veloy and Mishpat Moves, those key words, he does not deserve to die. Begoyal Adam who deceive. It relates to Goyal Adam. A Goyal Adam, if he killed the guy, the Rotzech Beshagig, okay, good, fine, Potu. Mesivi. Now Ravuna is an Amoira. Ravuna is now challenged by a Braisa, bad news. Mesivi. Veloy and Mishpat Moves. Berotzech Akos Medaber, sorry. The Braisa says outright against what you said. You know who's in Mishpat Moves? The murderer. He doesn't deserve to die. And now, if you want to argue with me, continue the Braisa. Maybe you will say that the one who doesn't deserve to die, i.e., he's allowed to kill the Rotzeach, maybe it's Goel Adam. Maybe you're going to suggest Ravuna's idea? No. As I read to you, the next part of the Posuk says, that he does not hate him from yesterday and the day before. Yeah? In other words, the Pasuk learns as follows, that when it says at the end of the Pasuk, look at the sidebar, the last words are, He does not bear a grudge from yesterday and two days ago. Remember, what did we say? Who's called the Soine? That if he killed him, it's a big, big, big story of, of, uh, of suspects here, if he didn't speak to him for three days. If the Otsech B'Shegeg was, gave him silence treatment for three days in a row, every good morning, good evening was met with, then what? And then he killed him after three days? Oh, that's a Shiloh. So when we say the guy who's a good, <laughs> in other words, the guy is a, is a normal Otsech B'Shegeg who described here, he's the one who did not hate him from yesterday and the day before. Mashma, that is to say, the end of the Pesach talks about Rotzech B'Shegeg. So Veloy and Mishpat Moves talks about Goel Adam. Yeah, so Goel Adam, he is the one who is the, yeah, the Goel Adam, he is the one who, yeah, El Goel Adam, sorry, no, 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 it's not Goel, excuse me. Loy Salim et Mol Shishon, but Rotzech Rotzech Medaba. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. I jumped the gun, sorry. Just like the end of the Pesach says, Loy Salim et Mol Shishon, the end of the Pasuk reflects in the middle of the Pasuk. I'm reading the Pasuk again. Pen Yudov Goel Adam Acher Otsech. Ki Yechem Levovoi. He may feel very angry about him. Vesigoi. Ki Yar Be'aderech. If the road is too long, if you're putting the life of the Otsech at risk. Viko Nefesh. Listen to this. Veloi En Mishpat Movis. He does not deserve to die. Ki Loi San Ulum Itmal Shilshon. Because he is not a hater of three days. We all know that the one who's not called a three days hater is Rotzech B'Shoigeg. Ah, so Loi and Mishpat Moves must be also Rotzech B'Shoigeg. So we're not talking about Goel Adam. We're talking here, yeah, we're talking about the Rotzech. Loi and Mishpat Moves is Rotzech, which means, according to the Brisa, the one who is the Rotzech, he does not deserve to die. And if the Goel Adam shot him in the head, Rotzech Adam should be killed. A Goel Adam should be killed. So this is challenging what Ravuna said. Okay, Zog de Gmor, Rotzech Omur, Haman Mekai Veloy Mishpat Moves, Begol Adam, a Kosov Medaber. Excuse, one second, yeah. Yeah, answers the Gemara. Now the Gemara is, so now Ravuna was challenged. Ravuna was challenged by the Braisa. Answers the Gemara, you're right. 
This brisa doesn't work well with Ravuna. However, Huda Kiaitana, Ravuna follows the opinion of different Tana. There's a machlekes tanoim, and Ravuna has every right to follow one Tana. The Tanya it says in the brisa, Veloi en nishpat moves, the girl of Dama calls of Medaber. This brisa before says like Ravuna. Who is the one who does not deserve that, who doesn't get that? Girl Adam. If a girl Adam chases him with gun blazing, when? Before he reached your Miklat? No problem. He's allowed to kill him. How do you know it's Girl Adam? Maybe he talks about the Rotzeach. The Rotzeach does not deserve to die. And Girl Adam, you kill him if he killed the Rotzeach. No. This is what I thought before. This opinion divides the Pasuk into two compartments. Mitmol shields from the end of the Pasuk goes back on the Rotzech B'Shoigeg. Hamani Mekayim Eloi Mishpat Mavis Begol Adam Akosom Medaber. Full stop. In other words, when the Torah said Loi Ein Mishpat Mavis, that's like in parentheses. That's give a separate segment in the Pasuk. He has no Mishpat Mavis. Who is that? The Goel Adam. Goel Adam killing? No problem. He's Potter. Because now going back to the Rotzech B'Shoigeg, he, the Rotzech B'Shoigeg, is not son of the Shil Shoim. But because, let me explain, the Potzek is basically saying one thing, make sure that the roads are nice and straight and quick and uh, best highway in America, whichever one that is, yeah, make sure that it is. Why? Because the Rotzech Adam may kill him. What does it mean? And he really is such a nice guy. He's, he's just a shaggy. He's not amazing. But that too can be interpreted in two different ways. Either we are being super sympathetic to the Rotzech B'Shoigeg, and we say, He does not deserve to die. Which means that if the Goyal Adam did something to him on the way, we kill the Goyal Adam. The Goyal Adam may, may still kill him. He doesn't care. The Goyal Adam may kill him regardless. So you should protect him. Yeah, the Lord Mishpat Moves, but the Goel Adam has Mishpat Moves. The other Pshat says no. The other Pshat says no. Loy Mishpat Moves, you should really be careful because the Goel Adam is no Mishpat Moves. You know what's going to happen? He'll run. He won't be fast enough. He's driving a Mazda. Otech Adam has a Maserati plus Lamborghini, right? So thank you. What a fair game, right? And, you know, then what? And you know what's going to happen? Loy Mishpat Moves. The Goel Adam has no Mishpat Moves. Goel Adam will come out of the car. <laughs> Nobody can do anything to me. Yeah. And therefore, you should be careful and, and, and create a good road. Nobody really wants him to get killed by the Goel Adam. The Allahi question is who's Loy and Mishpat Is it Goel Adam who is no Mishpat Moves? Or is it him? Machlaikis. Machlaikis. The Rambam Paskins, really. We're going to see more on the Sugya on Sunday. The Rambam Paskins, that he is, if he killed him, that is Potter. He doesn't exactly say it aloud. I'm being a little bit un, uh, not so far, I'm being a little bit in, not precise, I have to admit. He doesn't say it's aloud, it says Potter. If he killed him on the way to your Miklat, then you don't do anything to him. But yeah, but Potter also possibly, yeah, something like that, so I'm being careful. But we're going to see more in the studio later on, and we're going to mention on Sunday, remember, we're going to start off on Sunday, with the two Talmud Chachomim. Remember, we said on the way to the Yermiklat, he's escorted by Talmud Chachomim, who tried to dissuade the, the Goyal Adam from doing anything. They tell him, please don't do anything. Yeah, be nice to him. V'chule, v'chule. Atzlochu brocha. I'm going to listen to your question soon. I promise. I just want to say goodbye and a good, good Shabbos to everybody who listens to us on Torah anytime or YouTube. Atzlochu brocha. Thank you all for coming here. And I'm up for questions now. Thank you. Atzlochu.